My name is Associate Professor Sumit Raniga and I'm one of the MQ Health shoulder and elbow surgeons and researchers at this faculty. I have the pleasure of introducing one significant advancement in our biomechanics research program, which is this eight muscle actuated, six degree of freedom, advanced cadaveric shoulder simulator. And what we believe currently in the world, based on our understanding of the literature, to be probably the most advanced simulator that exists. Why did we do this? Well, the shoulder is an amazing joint. It's got significant range of motion, but it's held together with some ligaments, tendons, muscles, and a fine balance of bony anatomy. As you can see from the way it's moving, it allows you to reach places that no other joint allows you to do, in terms of reaching up high or reaching behind, and nearly every aspect of function that's required requires the shoulder to function well. We don't understand the biomechanics of the shoulder. Furthermore, we don't understand some of the surgical techniques that we apply to fix pathologies in the shoulder and how they work and how we can make that better. And then beyond that, when it comes to designing solutions in terms of replacements of the shoulder, there are certain things we still don't understand. And hence, we have put together a team from here in Australia, Canada, Switzerland, Germany, to design this advanced shoulder simulator. The idea of developing such a simulator was to actually understand the intricate biomechanics of the shoulder. Once we have a good understanding of the biomechanics, then only can you really understand how to restore normal biomechanics in a pathological situation where things are broken. If you don't know how the biomechanics should be in a fixed situation, how are you going to actually treat a patient when they have a problem? And so this is why we've designed a simulator which is essentially cadaveric, that has six degrees of motion, eight muscles actuating it, just like my shoulder and your shoulder. And that way we can understand the biomechanics, create problems that patients suffer from, and then try and fix those problems, which can have a profound impact on our patients that we treat every day. To that end, I'd like to introduce my colleagues to explain how this probably the most advanced cadaveric shoulder simulator in the world to date works. So we'll start off talking about the simulator's mechanical advancements. How it starts is we take a CT scan of the specimens and then from there we identify the origin and insertion of each muscle to identify their respective lines of action. That way when we place the motors or linear actuators in there, there's a minimized loss of force and we're actually pulling with the force that we want to. Another interesting feature is that with these CT scans, we generate custom 3D printed mounts for each specimen. That way it fits perfectly, the specimen doesn't move around, and it gives us some mobility and flexibility with being able to move the simulator around. In addition to the mechanical advancements of the simulator, there are also a few advancements in terms of the control system. So for the software side of things, we have two main outcomes that we look at. We look at the joint kinematics, so that's the angle of the humerus, which is this bone here with respect to the scapula. And a second major outcome that we look at is the muscle force, acting on each muscle. So you can see here we have each of our linear actuators that pulls on the different muscle tendons. On the end of each actuator we have a load cell that measures the, the force on each muscle and we simultaneously control the force we're applying to each muscle as well as the, the muscle excursion, so how, how far we're pulling each tendon. We control these simultaneously in, in tandem to produce some um, smooth, reliable motion that gives us um, good me measurement outcomes for joint kinematics and muscle forces. It's been my pleasure to be involved in this project and I think it's bringing together great minds from different backgrounds. We've got surgeons, we've got engineers, we've got physiotherapists all coming together to create this amazing simulator. The surgeons are the ones at the cold face. They're the ones seeing the patients, seeing the issues. And we as engineers, we want to fix things. So when they come to us with problems, we can use the latest engineering principles to generate the latest technical advancements, such as what we see here. Um, obviously today, we've got a plastic phantom in here, but um, this simulator will actually be used with real human tissue. Here at Macquarie University, we've got our own body bequeath program and we're very privileged to be having people donate their bodies for this sort of research. 
And it's because of this that we can get real translational research. This is where we can actually do surgeries and look at different implants and actually apply them here and the surgeons can actually use translational research, meaning that these sort of problems and issues that we discover here can be used in the very close future on the patients themselves. So what you've seen here is an international multidisciplinary team that's come together with all of our skills to try and develop a shoulder simulator, which is really a world first. We're going to now be able to analyse tissue, analyse implants, analyse their interaction and try and anticipate problems and optimise the way we treat patients so that we can get the best possible result for every single person that comes and sees us. This is really translational advanced research. Yep. Okay, moving to start. Starting movement in three, two, one.